<laughs> I'll introduce myself in a few seconds. I don't know how this happened, uh, but I got something. First of all, how's the audio? Do the 4,000 people watching this right now, can they chime in? They can chime in. Yeah. Um, I should introduce myself. My name is Michael McVeigh. I'm, uh, I'm at Eastern Michigan University. And uh, a few years, a few months ago, uh, my arm is still swore, swollen and sore from where Michelle twisted it back. Uh, she got me, we decided that it would be a great opportunity to uh, adopt a community uh, project. And we looked around for like the best one possible. And we found the Ypsilanti Community Media Lab. So um, I teach at the, uh, at East, Eastern, as I said, in the Educational Media and Technology uh, uh, Program. So we run a master's class, and we teach the, un what I like to say is we teach uh, the undergraduate uh, pre-service teachers how to use computers in the class, and we also teach the uh, uh, teachers how to use the computers better. So I have a whole collection of toys. I'll try not to step out of the screen too much. Let me see, am I there? Yeah. Good. So if you want to zoom in, you actually have to move your computer closer, huh? That's okay. Um, for those of you live streaming in, great. Um, I don't know how long this is going to take, but we're going to play around with this. Uh, you all have had some experience, limited or huge amount of experience in creating audio files, and or you know that you're going to have to. You're going to, you want to create a podcast, you want to create a video of some sort, you want to clean up audio. I'm going to show you a free piece of software that I've been using for a long time now to create podcasts. I have a number of podcasts on uh, iTunes University. I put my students through through this as well, and uh, um, my goal is to have clean, clear, crisp uh, podcasts. And if you can record, I mean, I've heard too many podcasts they just set the recorder going and then go, go, go. Somebody coughs in the middle and blows out the microphone, and the person recording doesn't know how to fix that or tidy it up. Uh, if you might have an annoying echo or some strange background noise. There are ways of removing all that sort of stuff using Audacity. And if you want to spe do special techniques like have layer upon layer upon layer, and if we have time, I'll, I'll, I can't do it on this computer because I can't get access to the internet. But um, just to give you, I'll give you the far end of the presentation. One year for fun, uh, we created an audio Christmas card for my family using Audacity. Um, we had a friend who liked to sing the Carol of the Bells. La, 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 la. I thought, well, why not do it with barnyard animals? So I did, you know, oink, 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 well, it sounded like a pig. And cows and dogs and everything. And, and I brought in the rest of the family and we did tracks. You could do layers of track after track after track and add all sorts of different uh, barnyard critters. We did it, it, took, it was a one minute audio thing. We saved it as an MP3 and sent and posted it online, put it up on a number of places and uh, sent it as a little audio Christmas card. So that's the far end of what some of the things you could do. Um, <clears throat> but let's start with the beginning. You should all have Audacity on your machine. I don't think we're going to be able to download Audacity onto your notepad. So, but that's okay. You're taking notes and you'll be dialed in. So, uh, who has Audacity right now working on their machine? You do, you do, you do, you do. Great. Everybody except you, and you absolutely need it. But you'll care catch up, right? Um, is that, that it's probably on the network? Right? Uh, no, but there's the. Um, okay, I'll download it. Audacity.sourceforge.net. If you see anything from SourceForge, I trust it. Uh, I trust SourceForge uh, without any issue whatsoever. Uh, and you can download it for, uh, it's, it's cross-platform, Mac or PC, uh, which is really, really helpful. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work us through a couple of activities, a number of activities, so that we have an idea of uh, how to use it. I've got screenshots of Audacity, and I'm also going to uh, just work us through some of the activities. And this is what, let me see, do I have... This is what you'll actually see when you call up Audacity. Um, hey, I actually have a little, uh, little electronic pointer and everything. Like I said, I've, got, I've got toys today. Um, of course, it doesn't work. It does work. Um, basically, it looks like a regular player bar. You've got uh, on the far left-hand side, pause, play, stop, fast forward, fast back, and the record button. This is the absolutely all important. And a number of other tools that we're going to talk, play with a little bit here. Um, I'm going to ask you to open Audacity, and we're going to first thing we're going to do is just do a little test. Um, we just have to test the microphone to see if they're working. Now, I plugged in a microphone from uh, this is this is one that fits into an iPad. It's called iRig, but you could use almost anything. One of my favorites is a is this cool. It's from M Audio. It's a cool little uh, uh, microphone with um, you know this little microphone at one end, microphone at the other. Highly 
highly sensitive, very sensitive. It's great for conversations. You know, you can plug it up one way and have, have the direct <coughs> feed coming in, both sides. Anyway, um, any microphone will work. I'm going to assume that the microphones on your computers work just fine. So why don't we just take a few seconds right now, and I'm going to just ask you to talk to your computers. Forget that there's background noise and everything. And I'm going to walk up. Pardon me, you streamers. I'm going to, I'm going to walk around the room for a few seconds and uh, just listen. So to record? I would, yeah, so to record, let me, let me just go. Here's a silly thing here. I'm going to turn the, I, the computer off for just a second. And here we go. I'm just going to do my, my talk. Um, I have chosen Windows Direct Sound, and I also have MME. They both work. I'm going to just click record, and here it is. If you see the, the, uh, the balance arrows working, uh, this is a wonderful thing. It means you're getting a nice signal. It's filling, up, filling it up nicely. I'm going to press stop as opposed to pause, and then we can just go back and play record. And here it is. If you see the, so I think it's working just fine, but I want you all to have this so you can all work on a little project. Have you hit record yet, Michelle? Well, you should say something to your machine. Well, say something. Now, another thing, here's the next thing I recommend, now that you're playing around with this, is try to figure out the best level. So I'm just going to click this little X here, the audio track, and I'm going to start again. I'm going to hold this back about, this is what, two feet and a half or so. So here we are, two and a half feet, and I'm getting closer, and now I'm about a foot away from the microphone. Now I'm six inches from the microphone. Now I'm my mouth, I'm swallowing the microphone, or uh, say, say I'm kissing the microphone. So here we are, two and a half feet, and I'm getting closer, and now I'm about a foot away from the microphone, now I'm six inches from the microphone, now I'm, my mouth, I'm swallowing the microphone. All right. well, what I've discovered from this is, this is a very good microphone. There's no, it, it's adjusting, it's adapting really, really well. If you have a cheaper microphone, now, when Michelle tried, sorry, I'm gonna use you as the cheap microphone. When she spoke, um, when she oh, I said you're nice. When, when she spoke, I could hardly see any little blips. She had just a tiny little blip on the screen. So what I recommend, Michelle, is that you get closer and closer and closer to your microphone, find the optimal distance. So we're gonna all watch Michelle there. Okay, right? the microphone. I'm getting closer, getting closer. How close do I need to get? Well, until you get some good levels, there, that's pretty good. Now you, you're kind of zoomed out a bit, but actually it's it's pretty good. Could you play it back? We'll listen to it. Because I was some people are programmed. Did you hear that? Now, let's say Michelle's isn't wasn't particularly good. On the left hand side, or strong on the left hand side, you can actually turn up the volume. So when we play it back, so here we are, at two and a half feet. You see what happens, and now I'm about a foot away from the microphone. And I can really crank this up, so harden your ears. Now for I'm, I'm, I'm swallowing the microphone. Right. right, so you can you can have an idea. If, if it's just the sound is just a little on the low side, you can tweak it that way. There are other ways to adjust the volume, and we'll talk about that in a second too. That's the first thing. Can the people hear what you have to say? Um, so let's go back, uh, take a, just dive into the presentation again. So we tested the microphone. This is good. We recorded our voice. So the task one, here's your first task. Record your voice when we'll be closer to the microphone. Hey, congratulations, you check that off. I think I've got eight tasks here. Check. Michelle, you get a star. Okay. Um, now the next thing is, we, we should start playing around with uh, this thing, normalizing the recording. Um, what the normalizing does, well, let's take a peek for a second. I'm going to go back to... Um, are we supposed to record stuff ourselves? Well, actually, what I'd like you to do right now is get a little bit of recording on your machine, all of you. Uh, maybe just say something uh, intelligent. Say something intelligent. Get in a little closer. <laughs> Try and make do this duty. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's just playing. You had two levels. You, okay, you, had, you had two tracks there. Yeah, something. I taped something earlier. And All right, well, if you want, you should just <laughs> press that little X to get rid of that one track. I think what I'm going to try and do instead is use a really my less less effective microphone. Getting closer and closer. Because Bill Gray is close to me, so I need to get further away. Now you're not going to be doing that in a normal situation. You probably have a microphone of some sort. Let me try this less less lesser quality microphone and see what happens. Um, okay, this is McVeigh. Uh, um, well. Wow. I appear to have a pretty decent microphone. Uh, both of them are good. All right, so 
Uh, what I mentioned before, I'm going to highlight everything and click Effect and look for a button that says Normalize. And what that does is it, get, it kind of finds an optical sound level, so you don't have too many highs, too many lows, too many uh, odd, uh, odd volume fluctuations. Let's hear how this, oops, we can't hear it because. I appear to have a pretty decent microphone. Ha -ha. Well, ha ha, indeed. So, so here we go. So we've normalized. So that's the first thing I'd like you to try to do is to normalize. Now this is this is this toolbar is going to be your most helpful tool of all. It's this little bit, bit up here called effect, and this is the most important thing that you're going to see. Effect, and uh, we're going to we're not going to use every one of these features, but what we are going to do is uh, use a couple of important ones. So normalize is is I'm just going to leave it there for a bit. And what you'll see is if you take a look at your sound profile. Uh, of whatever you just recorded. You have no recording there, Michelle, so we can't play. Delete Don't delete your work. It's okay. If you deleted it, you haven't broken. Here we go. All right. So I'm doing a task right now of this program. Perfect. And now, Michelle has left a lot of gobble. She's, she's left some junk at the beginning. So what happens when you hit normalize? What happened to your little blips and blumps? And not much. What you're going to have to do is hide here. Click outside the box here. Highlight everything. Press OK. That's good. All right. So what she had before, if you can't really see it in mind, but she had tiny, tiny little little blips. And then we press normalize. They kind of moved up a bit. So it increased the volume in some parts and, and lowered it in others, which is pretty good. Um, we're going to play with some of these other, other effects later. Um, but now, one thing I really do want to talk to you about, and if, if you have ever had a recording, uh, listen to a recording and you, in fact, here's what I'd like you to do. Listen to this room right now and listen to the sound you can pick up. We've got this, the overhead lights, we've got this, we've got air conditioning, we've got traffic. Um, if you've ever had those noise, try those noise canceling headphones, what they do is they take any repetitive sound like a refrigerator humming in the background and it takes that and it basically can cancel out that repetitive noise. Well, it's possible to do that with with Audacity as well. And one of the first things we should always do if you're ever recording anything, in fact, probably you've, you've seen this before, if you've ever seen a professional recording, when you were on trial this morning, did they do the five seconds, 10 seconds of silence? Well, they probably did without you being around. To find out what the background noise is. So here we go, I'm just gonna record 10 seconds of silence. So listen up. Five seconds of silence, that's pretty good. If we were to play this back, you don't hear anything, there's no speaking, but you, there's, a, there's a slight hiss and a hum. And I'll tell you what I'm gonna do on top of that, I'm gonna actually say a word in the middle so we get a sense of this, what the sound is like. So here we go, I'm gonna get rid of that audio track. I'm gonna try again. Testing, one, two, three. So we run our silence for a while and <coughs> Testing, one, two, three. Now, you're, for your ears, it might be just fine, but occasionally, there is some background sound you want to get rid of. So here's what I'd like to show you how Audacity works this. If I were to go to Effect, and we're going to look for something called Noise Removal. So you're going to, later, you're going to remove your noise. And it, it's two stages. First stage is, it's going to ask you to get a noise profile. So we're going to do that, and here's how we're going to do it. I'm just going to pick ten, a little chunk of sound that looks like it, it's pretty standard for this room. No one's talking. I'm going to go back to the effect, going back to noise removal. I've got the noise profile. Perfect. So it's found its noise profile. So now I'm going to highlight the whole thing, go back to the effect, and say, let's do noise removal. And, and you know, you can do all sorts of things with this. Let's not worry about it. Let's just go with whatever the default is. I'm going to click OK and watch what happens. Suddenly we've got almost dead silence, except for a couple of little clicks and chirps. So here, let's listen to it. Testing, one, two, three. What you were listening to, what those little, what these little bits here are, is actually me clicking the microphone or clicking the mouse. So if you're, if this is one of the best things. If you're doing a talk with somebody and there's background noise, that sort of thing, this is the tool that you need, the noise removal feature. Um, let's just compare that with what we had before. And this, so all that, all that stuff going on. Let me see what else you can do with this audacity. I'm going to take a little tiny stretch of that silence. 
And I'm going to press this, the, mic, the mic magnifying glass, and we're just going to zoom in and take a look at what these little bits and pieces look like, all these little sound waves and so forth. You don't hear them, but it's background hiss and fuzz that if somebody's listening on their high quality $200 earphones or whatever, or $50 earbuds, they're going to hear it. They're going to say, I'm not listening to this thing anymore. I, I tried to, to, to do a pod, to listen to a podcast once where they were teaching French. It was great. It was very nice, but the first 10 podcasts were unlistenable. I think that's a good word. Every time he would say, puh, the puh, or buh, it, it was like he was spitting on the microphone or tapping the microphone, and it would pop in my ear. After about uh, 10 podcasts, they figured this out. They must have heard complaints from people, and they took out some of that background noise and adjusted it. So what the point I'm making is sometimes just moving the microphone away from your face is a really helpful tool as well. And if you really want to get fancy, um, absolute, we're talking about noise and background noise. Um, I've, seen, I've seen these done before, taking little fabric boxes uh, or even using noise foam, noise canceling foam, put the microphone in a box if it has a stand. And this, I didn't bring the stand with me. Put the microphone in the box. It takes out all the noise on either side and it just gets you. And if you really want to get fancy, you can get a little, um, uh, for embroidery, an embroidery ring. And uh, someone was in my house recently, and they're saying, well, "How can you have a pair of black girls' tights in your?" <laughs> because it was my daughter's tights. What I was going to do is put them over the embroidery ring, so it's basically have a spit guard. So as you're talking, all the pup and whatever, anything violent coming out of your mouth, and a lot of violent things come out of our mouths, uh, will get picked up by that spit guard. Uh, so you can <coughs> you can play at home and having create all sorts if you read. So if you want to be, really be picky, and the test test of it is to take a look at what your silence level is. So let's say if I were to do the same thing now, I'm going to just to take record silence, and I'm going to do it from inside this, this box, which is pretty quiet down there. Here, whoa. Yeah, it's still noisy down there too. There's noise everywhere. So I actually can remove it for you. Let's take a look at this. So I'd like you to play just for a second. got to accomplish task three before you can get, you can get your, your chocolate. I, I need to see that you've actually removed some sound. Hey, I lost my recording. You have no sound whatsoever. Maybe you have. Maybe I you have one. Well, you've got, you got like, all sorts of recording in there. Here, press stop. So I need to get closer. Uh, uh, no, I'm press this button here. This uh, yeah, no, those are right. That gives you the whole thing. <laughs> so I see nothing. <laughs> so yeah. I had a recording. Mm -hmm. Not notice for your interface up there, your decibel levels for your range. Mm -hmm. I got them up high. No. Yeah, now. I had is you have like a range of 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 range you can hear you do it. Yeah, it did not in the beginning. I guess it worked. Oh, I did normal. So you did have sounds. Um, by the way, if you want to explore and uh, and poke around on this, um, the default setting for uh, the, the the stereo sound and 32-bit float and whatever it suggests in there, you don't need to know any of that stuff. It does. Uh, I would stick with the default though. And if you want to play around, there are all sorts of really neat things you can do. You can look at your sound using spectrograms if you want, so uh, you can see where you're hot, where you're hot, your pitch is high. You can also do a um, what's the other kind of cool thing? Pitch. Uh, no, this one doesn't have it because pitch is normal. So all waveform is the most standard uh, standard approach for doing this. Um, I want to show you a couple other features in, in a second. We're getting into areas that I don't. Uh, play with too often. So we did our noise removal. <coughs> so we've had, tra oh, let's clear this as well. We've also had tracks. We've played around with tracks. I'm going to just demonstrate what tracks can do for you. So now you're, you're going to do a little acapella with yourself. Um, I'll start with something really simple. Row, row, row your boat. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. There we go. So I have my first track. And now, 
If I create a second track, row, 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 your row, oh, wait, wait, I gotta get rid of that one. I have set this up so that uh, I can't hear what's coming through as I'm recording it. Sometimes it's, re it's very helpful to be able to hear what you're recording happening in the background. So what I'm gonna do is to go to File, or sorry, Edit, and Preferences. And there's a little button, you should check this. Um, it's been a while since I did this, so you'll have to excuse me for just a second. Playback, short period recording, sound effect, overdub. Uh, play other tracks while recording the new one. So I've gone to the preferences, recording, and I'm going to do this button called overdub. So here we go. So now when I record, I can actually hear it. Row, row, row your boat gently row, down row, the stream. Row your boat gently down the stream. Well, I'm going to do that again, but I don't want that at all. So what I'm going to do instead. Is I'm going to take this track, I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to press V, Control V. Well, here's what I'm going to highlight the whole thing, I'm going to press Control C, that'll copy it, and then Control V will paste it in. So now I have two versions of the same thing. So if I play it back, row, row, row your boat, Gretchen. Pretty straightforward. But now, but here's the fun part. I'm going to take this tool, which is the right, the selection tool. And it's possible for me now. Oh my gosh. Maybe it's not the selection tool. Give me just a second. Oh, it's this time shift tool. Do you see the one with the two arrows going each direction? I've clicked the time shift tool. And now what that's allowing you to do is to move things up in space and time. So I can now have a little bit of a segment that goes, uh, that, that overlaps. Let's see how this sounds. Row your boat gently row, down the stream. Your boat gently. Got a little round happening now too. Now let's take a look at this mess. This is a bit of garbage up here right now. We see we have a bit of uh, a sound at the beginning that we really don't want. So I'm going to go and click the selection tool, and I'm going to just cut out all this stuff. But let's make sure we don't want it. Um, we, well, we know we don't want it because we know that that's what white noise looks like. So I'm going to cut out all this stuff that we know for sure is white noise. And I'm going to go up here, and I'm, I'm just going to clean clean it up. There are a couple of ways I can do it. Uh, one is just highlight the section and use the little scissors, or hit the word delete key, and I'm going to use the scissors right now. So now I have kind of a, a cleaned up version. Let's see what happens. Row, row, row your boat, gently. Very little, I got the timing just right. Row, row, row your boat, gently down, down the stream. Row your boat, gently down the stream. So you get the point. You can do, uh, this, this is how easy it is to do layers. Quick review, if I want to move this little time shifted thing around, I would press the time shift button. And we'll go back and forth. So now I have these two clips, they're identical. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Row, row, row. That's all. But if I wanted to have them overlapped ever so slightly, now tell me, see if you can, you're thinking ahead. If I were to put these two just like one is just a bit of a second lag after the other, what's it going to sound like? Echo? Row, 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 your boat, your boat, gently. That's pretty bad, Echo, but yeah. So we can move it even closer and play row, with it. Row, 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 your boat, boat gently, gently down. down. That's bad. That's basically what an echo is, of course. Row, 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 row. The sound bouncing off the wall and coming back. Audacity will let you do that anyway if you really, really needed to have the echo effect. And thank goodness we don't hear echo effect a lot. I can highlight that whole bit, go up to effect, and choose echo. Oh, there we go, echo. The default is one second lag. That's that's way too long. So I put it at point 0.1. Pressed OK. And it's going to perform an echo now. You can't see it here, but we're going to listen. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. It's got a lag of about point 0.1 second. If you don't like it, what you've done, this is where the thing is, you, you can't break this. Just press Control Z, and you go back to where you were before. use that function very often. I couldn't, I couldn't operate a computer without track or control Z. So we've used the time shift. And the last thing is that you should be able to now create a round of some sort, or at least have multiple tracks uh, and, and, and speak over. And a lot of times in your, in your business, for the most part, if you're doing, if you're in the media, you're going to be doing a lot of interviews with people. And that's where uh, you're going to need to do a lot of controlling. So I tell you what, here's what we do. Let's just do a little task here. 
and you can walk me through it. Brand new s s stretch. Um, <coughs> my name is Michael McVeigh, and <coughs> my name is Michael McVeigh, and uh, I'm here to talk about um, uh, audacity. This is this is horrible. You're the editor. This is what you got sent in by people in the street. So let's see what we can do with it. My name is Michael McVeigh, and <coughs> my name is Michael McVeigh. And oh, good. Thank goodness he started from the beginning. What's the first thing we should do? Get rid of the cough, which we looks like it was right here. Or of course, or we can turn the cough into a ringtone. <coughs> Michelle laughed earlier, and I had a little copy of her laughing over and over. So. Good, so we've got a little stretch here, and I'm just, just going to do this roughly. I just took it, and you know that you can see up here, there's a little spot that's probably a bit of cough left over, cough residue. I'm going to hit the scissors. It's gone. So here we go. My name is Michael McVeigh. That's okay. Let's, if you really want to look at it, let's do this. We can zoom in with a little plus sign. And so here we look at this tiny little bit here that we could keep or not keep. So far, it's not bothering anybody, right? So let's go back. I'd like to show you another feature, by the way. If I'm going to be editing this section, for example, I can press this button with a magnifying glass with a little, uh, well, it's like a little line segment underneath it. That'll take just that clip that I'm working on and, and put the whole thing up on the screen so we don't see the full interview. Uh, if you want to see the full interview, click the magnifying glass and have that fit the whole project. So that's our whole project right here. So let's go back to the beginning. I'm going to press, go to the beginning. My name is Michael McVeigh, and uh, I'm here to talk about, um, uh, let's kill the earlier one. Let's, the, what, what is it I want to get rid of? If you have sensitive ears, um, I did this once. I did a, a workshop to, it, it, when I was living in Arizona, and the governor and other people were supposed to, Janet Napolitano, who's now Homeland Security person. Anyway, my daughter listened to it, and she was standing beside me going, um, um, I said, what? What do you mean? She said, um, you keep saying, um, and I didn't hear it. Happened. My ears were absolutely untuned to that. And as I went through, I said, oh, yeah, this is horrible. And actually, there are two ums in here. One is harder to find. One is easy to find. So let's go through. We know that it's roughly here. So I know it's roughly here because I've been watching. No, you don't need ears for this. Anyway. Um, uh, there. So I know the word audacity is here. So let's clean this up. I'm going to take this. And it looks like it was roughly around there. So I'm going to trim that out. And now, you see it, this looks pretty awful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little segment. Maybe I'll take a big segment like this. Stretch it out. Now let's listen. Out, out there. Yeah, it's bad here. So this is the start of an um here. I think I'm going to just trim that out so it, it just looks like it, it fits. So here we go. Um, let me go back a bit. Out, out there. Can't hear the whole thing. Let's, go, let's, let's do the whole project and hear what it sounds like then. Oops, sorry. Right from the beginning. My name is Michael McVeigh, and uh, I'm here to talk about audacity. Ooh, smooth. No ums. Hey, McVeigh, you're sounding really professional. Although I did have another um in there. Anybody notice it? My name is Michael McVeigh, and uh, ooh, around there, isn't it? And uh, now some people would say that's charming. You know, Kennedy asked, me, "I, uh, you know, I, I uh, John Kennedy, uh, President of the uh, United States." No, I, we don't like that. I can, I'm not charming enough to do that. And uh, I'm. And so, uh, I'm. So you have to make a decision. Is it something that we can take out? Is it something we should keep in? I don't know if I could extract it. Duh. 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 Maybe. It's up to you. This is the call you're going to have to make. Some us we're going to have to keep, and some us we're going to have to. Duh. Keep. Let's try to get rid of it. I think we might. We could probably get away with it. So here we go. I'm McVay, and I'm here to talk about audacity. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, what else can we do to clean this up? We already covered this. The background noise. Thank noise you very much. much. Let's try that noise removal. Thank you very much. I'm going to go to noise removal. I think I, maybe it's already got my, no, my noise profile. Let's see what happens. Oh, it did. So here we go. My name is Michael McVay, and I'm here to talk about audacity. That is fantastic. So there you go. A nice, clean, crisp. If you're interested, uh, there's this, some people did this the exact opposite of this once. They took famous uh, people, uh, speakers like Arnold Schwarzenegger or Joe Biden or whoever is a, a politician, they took one of their speeches and every gap where they don't have any actual words, they just put up a recording of the, uh, the breathing and the sounds and the, 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 the spaces between the words. It's amazing uh, what it sounds like. It's a, 
We all have them. We all have these weird gaps and funny breathing things. Some you'll want to include, others not. Here we go. So I'm looking at the last bit. I can clean that out. I'm going to just clear that last little bit out. There are no get rid of clips, clicks. It's clean as a whistle. We're ready to export it. We can't export a thing until we do this. And by the way, this is like the very last step in Audacity. After this, it's all playing and doing, playing around with uh, projects. Um, what we have to do is go to export, and we're going to export it as an MP3 file. Now, you or we actually have a couple other choices: OG or OG Vorbis Vorbis, sorry, OG files or OG Vorbis files. Uh, these are helpful. I'm going to tell you a cool thing you can do with those in a second, but. MP3 files is what we're going to aim for. It's a it's a compression, uncompressed. It's called they're called WAV files. It's 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 uncompressed. It's raw. It's a lot of file size. The MP3 compresses it down to a reasonable size, about one meg megabyte every, for every minute of audio file. So this is very short. It's going to be a very small file. If you try to record here, uh, intro. If you try to record something like this and save it as an MP3. You may be asked, you may be prompted to put up something called a lame encoder, L-A-M-E, or some people will call it lame, but anyway, lame encoder. You'll need to download that. Audacity now gives you a lot of hints and tips on how to get that. Um, so here we go. Well, apparently I've created this. I don't know where it ended up going. I should look for it. Here it was, intro. So I've got my little intro file, and I, I use a program called Winamp to play back some of these things. You can use whatever. Windows audio file. MP3 is pretty ubiquitous. You can upload it to iTunes. You can upload. What is it that uh, Heritage newspapers look for, Michelle? What do they upload? Uh, what files do they upload? As? MP3. Good. MP3, ACC. There's a lot of different codecs. Here we go. My name is Michael McVeigh, and I'm here to talk about Audacity. My name is Michael McVeigh, and I'm here to talk about Audacity. My name is Michael McVeigh, and I'm here to talk about Audacity. I think I don't want to hear this anymore. My name is Michael McVeigh. There, all done. Oh. So now, let's talk about podcasts for just a second. Now you, now you know how to make the perfect clip, how to clean out the bits you don't want. Um, and uh, I expect you to take these away with you and make brilliant podcasts. A uh, little heads up, let's say, this is my podcast here, we want a little intro music or something like that. Um, and you found a bit of intro music. You can, and, um, there are a number of places where you can get great audio files for free. Um, I can't get them because for some reason I'm not allowed to connect to the internet here. It must have recognized who I was. So let's see if I can do this. I'm going to try to um, generate, not generate. Uh, I'm going to try and add, but they moved a few things around, file. I'm going to open. Yeah, they have moved things around. I'm going to look for a little file, that an, an audio file, if I can find one, maybe under my documents. I'll look around for a, an, MP, an MP3 file on my machine. Let's just see if I can find one somewhere. I think this is, this is okay. It's a piece of music that I found. Let's just listen. Wow. City windows. I have no idea what it's going to say. Oh. Okay, a little bit of audio. There are some places called like Free Play Audio, or you can uh, use a track of your own if you found it or created a track of your own. So I found some music. Yeah, you know what? I had set the decimal decibels up really high. I should really play around with that. So just say freeplayaudio.com is a place where you can get. This is one place where you can get Free Play Audio, uh, Free Play Music. You should try it out. Freeplaymusic.com. I actually have an even better one that I'm happy to send you later if you're stuck, but um, uh, you can get all sorts of clips. Uh, if you do go online and look up uh, uh, royalty-free clips, you might be able to find something. So here I found a chunk of music. I'm going to just take a little bit uh, and, and see if we can use this. Uh, the bass is really strong. So is it like public domain stuff? Not quite. Uh, royalty-free. There are... Uh, there are um, there are a lot of things that are public domain out there. So this is what you do a search, public domain, look up MP3s, look up WAV files, uh, and see if you can find something that suits. Freeplaymusic.com free will at least give you a sense of lots of different tracks 
and then give you sort of the atmospherics that you might be looking for for a piece. So I'm just going to, oh, that's easy. Okay, that's kind of metal. We'll just use that. And I'm going to just uh, strip off all this little bit at the end. See how easy that is. Wow, this is a much longer piece than I thought. So I need this magnifying glass to take care of that. Delete that some more. Well, that was a much longer piece than I thought, so let's just uh, zoom in a bit. Zoom in is your friend. Here we go. So let's try again. Oh, we don't, we don't want the, the beats there. So here we go. So I've got this little segment that we're going to use as our intro, intro music for our lovely creative podcast. One more time. Oh, that's fine. A lot of things we can do with this sound, the sound bubble too, and um, we're gonna. I'm gonna play with it first, just for a second. Actually, what I'm not gonna, what I'm gonna do is gonna save it. File, save as. We're going to. Um, we're gonna export that, and we're gonna call it uh, intro two. Remember, I had my little intro earlier. I'm just gonna call it intro music. By the way, I have some people who call them intro and outro, uh, which is you know, you find a nice little segment. Why do people bother with that? There's a good reason for doing a little intro music or a little something. It just it's it's like a little mental boundary between play, between your pieces. Sometimes if you don't have anything like that, you just start right go dive right into your talk. You uh, if anyone's listening to a whole string of these, they'll lose track very quickly about what they're listening to. It's a bumper. It's an audio bumper. In fact, the radio people call them bumpers. Uh, the bumpers are very helpful. It gives you a little cue. It's, it's cueing the audience. You're saying, ah, okay, something new is about to happen. This is great. And this is also where you include a very, very brief introduction to your power, to your podcast or your PowerPoint or whatever, your, 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 your audio. Uh, if you're doing a podcast, really helpful if someone's listening to a bunch of these and you don't want to get 30 seconds into the podcast and find out, oh, man, it's one I already listened to because it's the same annoying introductory music all the time. Give it a nice short intro, get right to it, and this is the bottom line. If you're doing podcasts, this is all I want you to remember. When you do this, just start. And get into it as fast as you can. Don't go talking about how wonderful you are and that how hard it was to get this podcast going. Just dive into it. There are people who are saying, I want the information, go. So. We're keeping the intro and the outro as quick and as clear as possible. So if there, I've got one of these things. We have our intro. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to, um, oh, shoot. File, open, and what was our intro again? What do I, I call it? It's on the desktop. Thank you, pardon me. I'll find it. What did I call it? Intro, that's right. Intro two. Thank you very much. Tell me, I left there. It's intro two. We've got our music. Ah, oh, there we go. So we have our music, and I'm just going to zoom out a bit. And uh, we know we got this music at some point. I'm going to show you all sorts of cool things we can do with it. So here we go. I'm going to start with the uh, podcast. Uh, here we go. I'm going to just click right here and start. Hey there, this is Michael McVay. Welcome to my podcast. This is podcast number 45 in a series all about the wonders of Ypsilanti. A little bit of silence there at the end. So hey, let's just take care of that business right now. Generate, or sorry, effect, noise removal. We found our, oh, just took out the noise at the end. <laughs> I need to highlight the whole thing. Um, you're going to do this a hundred times yourself. Noise removal. All cleaned up. Very nice. Here's this, what do we have so far? Nothing because we're at the end. Um, Nice and clean, nice and clean. Now, um, do you remember how we moved back and forth? We moved this little, we shifted things around. Well, the way to do that is using this little shift button. I'm going to move this over here. I also want to clean this up, so I'm going to use this upper eye thing here and clean that up. There, it's all cleaned up. Here we go. Let's just hear what it sounds like now. No, 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 I started too soon, right? So, time shift, move things around. And we want a little bit of music at the very beginning. So I'm going to press, oops. What's the problem? Your voice is too low. Yeah, you can't hear me at all. So I can do a couple things. I can crank up my volume, move it up, 
Or you can also do, and this is the whole point of this, I'm going to show you a tool. It's called the envelope tool. Now I'm going to click this. There we go. I'm going to click this track. What we're going to do is we're going to play with this track. And we can do things like crunch it down, change the... Uh, I'm going to... Let me see that is right now. I'm going to click a couple of points in, in my... Uh, what you can do is this. You can click a couple of points in your, in your track and just drag them down. In fact, believe it or not, you can, you can drag this volume down to almost nothing, or to nothing, in fact, if you can get it to the right spot. I may mean, I mean, have to zoom in a bit to do this. Whoops. Which will you use? Uh, it's the, called the envelope tool. It's this uh, other button with the blue line that goes through it on the upper right hand corner. So what I, now this is, I'll tell you what, there's an easier way. Before we start playing with that, let's just, let's just use the easier way. Um, I tried to undo it. Won't let me. There it is. It's by pressing Control Z, I'm able to undo that whole bit. I could also do this. I can choose. I can select this stretch here, and I can go to Effect. And I think there's a fade out. Do you see fade? There it is. Fade out. There we go. It's a fade out button. Um, it's probably okay. It's something if you want if you want the music to end smoothly with a little bit of overlap. Let's do this. Thing. We like the track, it's not very long. I've increased the volume on my, my, my voice here. I know this is starting to get a little cluttery, so let's just dive right into it and see what we've got so far. Oops. A little bit of music. At this point, it'd be nice to have a little. Hey there, this is my new day. Welcome to the podcast. This is podcast number 45, and it's just I think it may have uh, faded out a little too fast. So we say, yeah, that's too fast. So let's use this way cool tool up here, the envelope tool. And we're going to go up and we're going to say, I'm going to choose this part and piece at the end. And then we're just going to be able to zoom the whole thing right down. You can sort of zip it down to a nice quiet fade out and take as much time as you like to fade the thing out. So here we go. I'm going to move my, my time shifter around a little bit. And here we go. Let's hear what it sounds like now. A little bit of guitar music. Hey there, this is my new day. Welcome. Yeah, to it's okay. It's very rough. It's number forty-five in a series all about the wonders of Ipsilanti. Now it's a bit clipped and a bit, you know. And uh, by the way, the reason that it is a little clipped and chunky is because we did that noise removal. Noise removal isn't perfect by any means. Um, and here's the other thing: if you don't like your clip the first time, get rid of it. Uh, there was one other thing wrong with that little clip that I made. You don't want to volunteer something? What was wrong with that one little clip? I won't say anything. You can't hear it anymore, can you? Listen to me talking. Listen to me talking. It's not even technical. Hey there, this is my new day. Welcome to the podcast. This is podcast number 45 in a series of two facts. If you're making podcasts, I also want to tell you one more thing. Just slow down, relax, and uh, somebody who's been doing, did hundreds and hundreds of these voiceovers for radio suggested the following trick, and I'm going to share it with you now. Thank you, Diane Lawrence of Eastern Michigan. She said, smile. Keep the smile on your face the whole time. And you know what? The tone comes through. If you're serious, if you're reading, if you're focused, you're not going to you do, do a very good job. So here we go. Let me hear the differences. Um, here we go. I'm going to do my intro right now. I'm going to park it right, where am I going to do it? Right here, right at the end, and I'll shift it in there. Hello, this is Michael McVeigh. Welcome to our 45th podcast on the wonders of Ypsilanti. I'm going to use the little shift thing, slide it around. There we go. Here we go. Let's mm -hmm. Welcome to our welcome to our forty. Let's fifth stop. Go back to the beginning. Here we go. Hello, this is my Michael today. Welcome to our forty-fifth podcast on the wonders of Ypsilanti. All right, here we go. You think you've got the whole thing done? And by the way, you can also put. You can also copy and repeat the uh, the music if you want. Oops. You, it's possible to also just uh, copy 
and paste the, the music in again at another place, and uh, there it is. And um, so you can have your, uh, and reverse the whole process. Use this little device called the envelope button and change things out, and uh, then you can, instead of fading out, you can use the, the opportunity to fade the music in at the end of your podcast if you wanted to. Um, you're going to learn many, many more techniques and skills as you develop uh, your own podcast uh, podcast skills. And you see what I did, by the way? I could take this little clip that's floating, mm. and I'm going to just drag it up to the, I'll call it the music, the music level. Uh, it's, this, is, this is where all our sounds are. So here we go. I have my podcast is ending. You can see that gonna, the music's going to fade up. And there we have a nice little an intro, an outro. Let's see what it sounds like. Let's hear what it sounds like. And then, there you go. Hello, this is Mike and Dave. Welcome oh, to this a little bit of echo. podcast on the wonders of Ipsilanti. It may be a little too rapid, fade out, fade in, but that's where you and your, your trained ears are going to come in. Once you're done, you're going to go to file, you're going to export, and you're going to export the thing as an MP3, and then give it to your boss to uh, approve of it. Of course, she's, she knows you're so good, you, she's not even going to have to give it a listen, right? She won't even give it a listen. She's too busy. <laughs> she's too busy. Um, if you take, by the way, if you have time, take a look at the effects. Most of these things you won't ever need, but you can play with uh, everything from echo to uh, repair, which is kind of funny, wah-wah. Um, and as you go through there, the newer version has a ton of new uh, things, cross-fade in, cross-fade out. You can do all sorts of cool things with that. Um, and if you go to the Audacity site, there are a number of... Um, Helpful, helpful hints for each one of these effects and each one of these tools. There are more tools than I ever ever needed to use in my whole life, and I may never ever use. Um, let me just go all the way down to the bottom. Simple decay steps, karaoke. You got to find out more about that, and a lot of other uh, encoders and EQ and things like that. So uh, you can you can turn this into an avocation if you want, an entire career choice by uh, trying to learn all the different features that Audacity offers. Uh, the heads up for you is, uh, and this is why uh, Michelle loves this so much, is that price, price, it's free. Oh, I told you there's one other thing, um, one of the options that showed up for how to save these things as, as a box, uh, an OG Vorbis, or an OGG file, file type. Anyone have a, a Tom Tom? Uh, rate of GPS device for the car, a lot of these others. There are 64 key phrases that TomTom Tom uses, and you can record your own voice on all of them. And, and when you do this, you read through 100, 200, 300 meters, yards, turn left, turn right, that sort of thing. 64 of those essential phrases. Um, and if you save them as OGG files, this is a program that will allow you to do that. Uh, you can have a clean, crisp version of each of those and trim trim the ends in the beginning so it just fits perfectly. You can have your own voice on your GPS navigator if you want. If you're sick of the uh, British voice or the woman or whatever, you can have your own voice. I did it for my own uh, at home, uh, and uh, sadly, I had a head cold that week, so it sounds awful, but um, I, I, I still have it on just for fun. It's a bit, it's a bit nasally. Anyway, I'm not sure if I can answer any more questions. We've been talking for about an hour, and um, I think now is a chance for you just to play around with this yourself, and if I can look over your shoulder and help you out. If you ever get stuck and buttons aren't doing what they're supposed to do, just check on the upper left-hand corner that you're, you get the most essential tool here. The selection button is chosen. Um, and then have fun. And if you need to contact me at all, and I doubt that you ever will, but if you do, you can find me through Michelle or mcveigh at emish.edu. And uh, I'm looking forward to hearing some of your really interesting podcasts. So, what, oh, so if you, are you, you going to, oh, you already printed out the notes. Are you going to um, insist that?